it's so good to see you again. We just launched your podcast two days ago, episode 69. That was so much fun. On the podcast, we talk a lot about Milk Makeup and new launches and key products. But one of the other things that we discuss is the incredible inspiration behind Milk Makeup that maybe some people don't know. Can you share that story? For sure, yeah. Milk Makeup was definitely, um, was born out of Milk Studios. Milk Studios has been, we began downtown New York City 24 years ago. But Milk Makeup, the genesis was really this creative set that lived and worked and played there, right? They'd be in the jam room, they'd be in the gallery, they'd be in the bar, they were at the events there. It was definitely inspired by the people who um, kind of frequented it, not the looks that were being created in the studio per se. So it wasn't like this hyper glamorous overly sexualized sometimes look that you were seeing coming out of a studio it was much more like the cool kids who were hanging around outside yeah and in the beginning at the time when you were inspired by these creatives that were working at and spending time at milk i was just wondering what what were you doing as a now a co-founder to hone the idea were you for example taking pictures of people were you gathering ideas on a mood board take us through what was happening creatively at the very beginning for sure well it was kind of like we'd sit in the lobby and that would be myself diana georgie and rossi who we all we all work there right so we would just kind of sit there and watch these amazing creative people walk by and just in the most quirky looks right so you'd have like i said to you the equipment girl who had like amazing tattoos but wore this beautiful red lip and then nothing else face or then you'd see like Kanye as an assistant walk past wearing like the coolest eyebrows and just like some like a slash of a color on the eye um so it was just like watching these influencers musicians artists photographers stylists wander around wearing makeup in their own very unique way um and we just got to work thinking about it right and I was came from a beauty editor background so it was definitely something I'd always talked to my husband, Rossi, about who's found in Milk Studios. Right. Um, but it was Rossi who really said, OK, Georgie, Zana, Diana, this is the team. Let's get to work on it. But it was um, it was a long process. I mean, it felt obviously like all consuming at the time. Um, but I, I'd say it wasn't overnight because Mil Milk has been there for 24 years. So the process has been going for quite some time. Yeah, and the videos and the photos on the Milk site really tell that story of real people style. Yeah. How do you do your casting? Gosh, well, I all credit to Georgie with this one. She is, uh, Georgie Greville has an amazing creative mind and she, um, from the get-go was not interested in gender. It was like a moot conversation. It was whether you're, and it wasn't models. We didn't go for any really big models. It was all about street casting, which six years ago wasn't that big a deal. Um, and it was real people who, I, some people actually worked at Milk. Um, some of people we knew, creatives, um, you know, designers, makeup artists themselves were in the campaign. But it was people who really represented the values of Milk um, and lived that lifestyle, which was yeah. just free, fun, fast, ambitious, yeah. um, you know, just free. Was there a first product that was developed or a handful or so at once? How did the products get? Cracked? Oh, so I remember Diana bringing her first, like a first meeting and she had a bunch of products. Can you hear the, the horns behind me guys? I am in a car park by the way. I know we, can, we just we can joined. Hear you. It, is there a way to um, sit back a little further from the camera? How's we that? want to see you. We want to see your gorgeous face. I'm too close. That's the first. Is that better? Yeah, I think it's better, probably. Great. Or center yourself a little bit. There you go. You can have the steering wheel. And now we can't see your eyes. <laughs> I'm going to go like that. How about that? I'll just hold it. Oh, don't hold it. <laughs> Did that happen? Your Wi-Fi went out? Oh, yeah. Well, we're upstate and it happens all the time. And it's the yeah. most maddening thing. I mean, you should have, my language was not the best today. I've just been on calls with Milk Makeup team as well. Just being like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah. First product. So um, Milk really has this kind of art supply vibe about it, right? We wanted it to be less like luxury beauty, more like playtime. So it was like crayons and pens and markers. Um, and the actual first design of a milk makeup lipstick and all the packaging initially was based on the milk makeup, uh, sorry, the milk studios pen. I may have, uh, have one here. It's like a gray pen. Everyone who came to the studios used to steal it. You've probably seen it. Um, 
And it was very clean, just with milk makeup on the side. And we wanted our first products to look almost just like stationary arts and crafts supplies. So one of the first ones that really stands out to me was an eyeliner that was exactly like a marker pen, like the highlighter nib on a gray marker pen. And it would just slide across here. Like this. it was amazing. I don't know why we don't still have it, but it was the most, it was like a real stake in the ground, right? Cause no one was doing stuff like that. And Diana's like, yes, I mean that, that shape and that style is so milk and it's so, I love that. Very utilitarian. It's such a departure from stuffy packaging. You know? totally and we don't do packaging for packaging sake either because that's just terrible for the environment and also for our the girl or the guy who was using milk it was about easy on the go lightweight like we like to take the fuss out of makeup instead of making it more cumbersome we're going to talk about that in a bit um i love that about a lot of the milk products but what i love about milk is not only that you use the most clean ingredients but they're interesting and cool they're it, cool, innovative ingredients. So let's first talk about Kush Mascara. Um, because it's a bestseller. It's a total favorite of many, including our cover star, Dove Cameron. We talked about that on the podcast. Kush honestly builds mas lashes in a mascara like no other. It's, it's statement mascara. It really is statement. It's made up of heart-shaped fibers, Sana. Can you talk about that? I've never heard of such a thing before. Oh. I felt the same. I remember Diana saying, and it was in a, that first um, meeting, she's like, it's heart-shaped fibers as opposed to straight fibers. What does this mean? Do we pattern this? Um, so basically, instead of, like, imagine a straight fiber that sits on your lap, like spiky. But then a heart-shaped fiber is tiny, but it sits like this. So they build on your lashes, like hearts building up together. Yeah. It gives you this crazy volume. Um, crazy volume like i said it's, it's to me it's statement mascara like a statement shoe or a statement bag yeah yeah i know because i clearly didn't put enough on today running around the house there we go yeah it's just like yeah i mean you can see it instantly yeah I mean, here we are on instagram live and you can really see that in instantly in a car by the way yeah in a car obviously um, um, oh it's so contains so, um hemp derived cannabis seed oil which is give us this really nice effect to lashes so we actually found that people wearing it can take their mascara off without the tug and it also gives lash really um like no almost like a hair mask for your eyelashes at the same time which, which i love it it has cannabis oil which is conditioning and yeah. not only does it build the hell out of your lashes it conditions them at the same time and I, you were telling me again on the podcast that you encountered some people with Kush that needed convincing when it came to using cannabis in your form formula. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, it was a long time ago and it was when it wasn't <laughs> done. You know, people were not using CBDs and that it wasn't really commonly talked about. And it certainly had not in cosmetics, like other cosmetics. So, um, I mean, we, we did. You have to come across conversations. You have to be able to... Um, talk about what the benefits of it right and it's not about anything any negative connotations it's about yeah seriously but, benefit. and it's in a beneficial ingredient being, you know, yes even the of it and not makeup so yeah we had to we had to navigate a few uh, a few uh, a few issues but yes all uh we talked about dub cameron when we did our cover story she named kush as one of her favorite things and there are some a few other fans of me uh celebrity fans of milk drew barrymore and sarah jessica parker also love milk products can you talk a little bit about those can so um sjp is so lovely and she's she get she loves it i actually have it here it's a lip and cheek stick and i know i think you like this one as well tomorrow oh yeah i love it i love it so this is our classic iconic lip and cheek p.s these are all straight out of my makeup bag and it's been going for a while so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Consumer use, as Sarah Jessica Parker calls it, consumer use. Um, I have this fab color. On you have. Like oh, that that one. Yeah. Work. This one. See, this is work. W e r k, and it's kind of that perfect pinky brown, the people that you can't really find. You know, and it just works. Obviously, it gives you this sheer build on your cheeks. 
but it melts in. It doesn't sit necessarily like that. So if you watch how that just melts right in, it gives you a nice highlight here. Sorry, a nice pop, I should say. And then I just kick it. It's perfect. Then you get the lip. And That's it's like gorgeous. Literally on the go, in the car, wherever you are, pull it out and pop it on. And these now come in small sizes as well, which is perfect for the handbag. Yeah, and for traveling. Uh, which product does Drew Barrymore love? She loves the blur stick. I don't have the blur stick here, but it's we call it our universal face filter. Um, and she, I was on her show, and she was just I completely unsolicited. Had no idea she loved it so much. Pulled it out and was like, <laughs> this product is <laughs> game changer. Um, and it really does give you this. Um, there's my friend outside. This is hysterical. Um, it really gives you this, like, filter looks like you have a, a filter for walking around um and it's a silicone primer pop on your face and it just gives it this like even even appearance we're gonna have to add that to we have a milk shop on our site we're gonna add that product to it because that oh. sounds great uh, another really cool ingredient that milk uses is melatonin i mean who knew that melatonin could be great in skincare can you tell us about your two products that contain melatonin? I'm, I'm obsessed with this. Like, here they are. I have, I have the one here. See, it's, so melatonin, you think for nighttime only, but I am actually a complete melatonin all day long lip mask girl now these days. So it is... I, um, so this is a lip mask. Pop it on at night. Hey, Randall. Here. Thanks. Randall Slavin, my two faves. Ah, oh, Randall, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, this lip mask. I'm, so, I mean, the, the idea is to use these before bed. So, before bed, I pop this one. I use this all day because I just love that shine it gives. I love that. I love that. I think that's such a cool ingredient. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea of using skincare at night and adding with a little melatonin. You know, I think that's great. Yesterday here on Instagram, we posted a quote from you um, from the podcast that everyone can go and listen to uh, about one of Milk's latest launches, which is electric glossy lip plumper. And another cool ingredient, it contains Szechuan pepper. How cool. And you said, this is such a go-to product for you. I have it on now. So I layered it up underneath and above color. And you really do have to give it a few minutes and then you get that buzz, you get that plumping effect. I love it. It's like 20 seconds or on some people or longer on other people. And you know the reason for that, uh, Diana Reeves was telling me, she said it's, it's actually it can change hormonally. So depending where you're at, it can actually change. Oh, that's so yeah. funny. Yeah, isn't that mad? Um, but this, yeah, it comes in six different shades. As you said, Szechuan, which is, gives it like, like fiery tingle and it also contains volulip which is a vegan collagen because you've never really had a clean lip plumper before they're always filled with a lot of other stuff Things that we, we're, we're scared of yeah this is absolutely clean and it does over time increase the volume of your lips but also every single day it makes them look fuller and smoother and it's got this like like you said it's like a glassy the only products i've got on really nice. which color do you wear on the carpet or do you just try them all one's buzz Actually, Buzz. but yeah, I think you've got um, wired. I've got the super bright. I've got the, I've That's... got, um, what color do I have? Wired. I'm not sure. I took it out of the package, but this one's, this one match. I cho chose this one because it matches the lip stick that I have on. I love that you can feel it as well, even through the lip. And it's funny that I did feel mine not so soon. It took a little time for me to feel my... Right. My, my plumping effect. But I love, you know what I love too, is I love that if you use it over time, it will help the volume of lips. That's great, everyone. Everyone, I mean, why would you not run out and buy this like right now, <laughs> you know? Uh, great test and it was, and we well, obviously, um, we test it out a lot. And then there was 100% um, of people over, I think it was a three week period, really noticed a difference in the, um, the, just in the fullness of their lips. Well, we talked a little bit about the red carpet. This is kind of your go-to on the red carpet, but let's get into the red carpet for a little while. Um, the Golden Globes was broadcast recently, which we, you were a part of also on the podcast. 
we talked about a return to varied and vivid color in Hollywood and on the carpet. I keep thinking of Anya Taylor-Joy's Emerald Green, Queen's Gambit, um, Anya Taylor-Joy. Do you want to talk about why we're seeing color right now in Love fashion? Yeah, complete. I mean, I, I call it wearable optimism. I think we're all in need of not only look, feeling good, but um, not only looking good, I should say, but feeling good from the inside out. Um, wearing a color immediately lifts your mood and the mood of people around you, it, without doubt. Um, it's got such an impact in a way that we were discussing, like the Globes 2018, for example, everyone wore black, right? And everyone was, wore black. Everyone. Every, literally everyone. Everyone. And, and it was the most major impactful moment for a reason we sent this great message by wearing black. Well, this year we're seeing, I think we're going to have that whole flip and it's a different kind of message, but the message is one of optimism. It's one of joy. It's one of we are free, be able to wear what we want to wear. We want to go out again. We want like, it's, it, it's just going to symbolize so much joy and freedom. I think that you will see bright colors, brilliant silhouettes, maybe even less of the beating, just really big, large, brave, bold, vibrant silhouettes. In terms of neutral colors at the Globes, I loved um, Andrew Day and Chanel and Regina King and Kate Hudson, both in Louis Vuitton. There seemed to be a black and silver moment. Who were your favorites of the night? Do you recall? I do, I do, because um, I spoke with Wayman and Micah while they were getting Regina King dressed. Um, and that dress was, uh, it was like armor. It was the most beautiful, elegant armor I've ever seen and just the pattern work on it things must have taken days to make in fact they did days to make weeks in fact um and I also love Shira Haas in Chanel I think yes so you know she's a young star like she's coming out she's this is her first time in LA on a carpet um on a carpet I say in inverted commas <laughs> right that one um carpet but she looked incredible. Petra Flannery is her new stylist who's just like the biggest stylist in Hollywood. He dresses everyone from Renee Zellweger to Emma Stone, Zoe Aldana. Um, so I think good hands with Chanel and Petra, but she, she just seems so quirky and gamey, like one to watch in every way before. Yeah, and then there were the Grammys. We love Noah Cyrus, speaking of pulling things off in volume, right? We love Noah Cyrus and Schiaparelli. I mean, she, if anyone can pull that off, it's someone like Noah. And I love Dua Lipa's Pastel Butterfly Versace. And I love Doja Cat and um, Fausto Puglisi Cavalli. Cav uh, ah. Yeah. It, uh, who caught your eye at the Grammys? Oh, 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 oh. Um, Billie Eilish. Um, yes. Mainly because, well, apart from her amazing Gucci ensemble, she was wearing milk makeup. Um, yes, we're going to talk about that. So she, proud. Um, she wore your color chalks, which are also a new launch. Well, I'm actually, I'm wearing it. trampoline, and I use it as a lid and also an eyeliner. It is. Um, yeah, so you can use this. I've got a bunch of them in here. So you can use it on your eyelid. You can use it on your cheek. You can use it on your lips. You can use it in your hair. <laughs> you can use it absolutely anywhere. Um, yeah, if you can see, there's a really wide range of colors above me. Those are all the chalks. I love so your by the way, Tamara, thank you for doing all that. Oh my gosh, I love, you gotta get into it. I got, I'm into it, I'm into it right now. I wanna be surrounded by product. Uh, but I love this color trampoline. And I love, you know what I, I love? I love, it comes in this little case and it literally is like a little piece of chalk inside of the case. It's um, super cool. It's extruded pigment, so extruded powder pigment. So it's pure pigment, there is zero waste in it really packs a punch with one swipe. Um, and we created these, as I mentioned on the podcast, Diana was like, I hate palettes. I'm never doing a palette. And we were all be like, when palettes were big, like, but oh, please, a palette. She's like, nope, hands down, never doing anything that everyone else is doing. Plus there's so much waste with palettes. You know, not only the plastic in them, but also the idea that you only use two of the six colors anyway, usually. Um, so she- So can, true, very oh, true. Right, color chalk. We all get into them, but the, that, that's the that's the cold and honest truth, right there. Not portable enough, then, you know, some most aren't portable enough, and most um, aren't. Yeah, for a brand that, you know, keep on the move. Do you know which color chalks uh, Billy wore or she combined? 
Yes, she will. And actually, Sarah Wren, our global artist, is going to do a how to get the look on um, Instagram. So she's going to show you exactly how to do it. But Sarah. Rob Rumsey, her um, makeup, her makeup artist. I have been. He's amazing. We love him. Thank you, Rob, for everything you do. I think this is dodgeball that she wore. What is that? Oh, it's like a metallic bleach. So if I do this now. You are really doing up your face today here for I us. I love it. You know yeah, what? Tell who gets ready in the car, though. Like, that's my thing. I, I mean, that's. Oh, good. Uh, she pretty. Like, so she did that. Yeah, because there was quite a lot of pink in her Gucci look. You can pop it on here and just get a little highlight as well. You know, it's good actually if you wet it too. Mm. Really gives you a little, like, more of a highlight. Um, she did this and she also did Sunshine Skin Tim, which is. We're going to talk all about Sunshine Skin Tint. That one then. Um, and then she did Cush Mascara. And she did Flex Concealer as well. Which is one of our... It's funny. It's one of our underrated heroes, that concealer. It comes in a little part, a little tube. It doesn't cr cake or cream in anything because it's got this marshmallow root in it. So it literally like bounces on your skin. Hence the reason it's called Flex. Such a good product. I really like good for on camera. Great for on camera and great yeah. for YouTube. You know, don't want to wear even a lot of makeup and it just works as, uh, that's all you need, just touch up areas. I'm yeah. My, uh, my bag. Speaking of Grammys, what did you think of Taylor Swift's Oscar de la Renta flower garden look? I loved it. I think Joseph does such a good job with her stuff. Um, and the fact that Oscar de la Renta are now, you know, the kids from Monse and so they 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 breathe such life and freshness into it yes bonified that yes um, matching mask big trend for spring right we're oh. all matching exactly yeah matching mask ladies and yeah Jeff. yes um you know it seems that statement nail game is stronger and stronger in music and at music awards shows i could totally see milk creating a clean nail extension category Ooh, I like that idea. You know, we. Actually, I mean, I just feel like it's so your brand in a way. I mean, it's probably pretty difficult to do, but we started. It was funny. One of our first products you asked before was a spray-on nail. It was actually really, really fun. We only sold it in Urban Outfitters at the time, um, and it was a tricky one to try and sell as well in the store without having people on the shop floor. But it was a fun product. Yeah. Any insight to how? the Oscars ceremony will unfold from a fashion and red carpet perspective. How will it be handled? Any insider info there? Um, what have we got? It's going to be, um, I'm just reading someone's comment there. It's so, so cute. Um, I, what, what did they say? Did I miss it? I think I missed it. So beautiful and adorable. Very classic best of the day. Not okay. referring to, but thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think it's going to be a hybrid. There's going to be people on the carpet. There's going to be people at home. And for that reason, you can get people who are on the carpet who are going to go for gold. Again, like the color I was referencing. I think it's going to be less about bling. You know, sometimes there's, there's all this like crazy jewelry and there's like security guards littering up the carpet because they've got 8,000. 8, oh, we know that way far too well. Securing right. jewels. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Um, I think that I think there might be a turn away from that a little bit, I imagine, just with the climate. I don't know how, you know, appropriate that would be to come decked out in eight million dollars worth of jewelry, but um let's see. I, I I hope for big big things literally and metaphorically. Um and those at home uh, they're not sharing our way either. People are still like going for the big silhouettes, wearing big dramatic shapes, you know. If you look at Tracy Ellis Ross, look at Zendaya and Christopher John Rogers at the end, like beautiful outfits. Um, yes. And the, their Instagram handles and platforms, and as is E, where we have everything as soon as it comes out. That's right. You do, do such a great job. The um, nominees were just announced. There's Andrew Day. I think Vanessa Kirby is so interesting. She's the star from the film Pieces of a Woman. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited to see what she's going to be looking like. Who are you looking forward to, and who do you think is going to hit it out of the park? Oh, um, I look forward to. I think. And what about the men? There's some pretty snappy men on the carpet these days. We have so we have 
Viola Davis, Andrew Day, Vanessa Kirby, Frances McDormand, Carrie Mulligan. Uh, we have Glenn Close, Amanda Seyfried, uh, Riz Ahmed, Chadwick Boseman, Anthony Hopkins, Gary Oldman. Uh, I'd say Amanda, I was really, really into at the at the and she wore she wore Oscar de la Renta as well. That was really pretty. Right, so pretty, and I I just love I, I just love her entire vibe, and I love what Elizabeth Stewart's doing with her. So I'm excited for that. Um, also, her is going to be there as well with her nomination. So I'm really like she does great things with you as well, and wears shape in an interesting way. It's ne never obvious, so I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen there too. Yeah, who are the actors and musicians that are out there that you think really master makeup, who take chances uh, and hitting the right trends in the right way, would you say? Uh, I mean, I like the people who are brave with it. Or just, you know, they wear it not for a trend, but they are as a personality. Like her, for example, I was literally studying her eye makeup from the Grammys. It was like this marble-esque woman on her eyes. I, don't, I need to, like... Google a whole thing again and try and recreate it. It was so beautiful. Um, and then you have people, uh, who was it? I was thinking of, a, oh, what's the name? I just thought somebody completely slipped my mind. Well, obviously Billy was amazing. Um, and then Dua Lipa as well. I mean, in her sultry, awesome way with the bright red lip, nothing else in the face. It's just, I, I love it when it's one element and not the other. Lizzo. I love that too. I always love it. Lizzo's makeup's always on point. I love it. I love, always wait for what Lizzo's going to do with her face. Uh, I want to talk about, well, I bought Milk Sunshine Oil a while ago. Uh, it contains grapeseed oil, avocado oil, grapefruit, mandarin orange peel, and lemon peel. How do you, it's a multi-use product, right? It's for body, cuticles, hair. And I love that you use citrus in a lot of your products. I think that's so fun. It's so cheery and uplifting. How do you use sunshine oil? Oh, I use sunshine oil everywhere. I use it on my cuticles. I use it on this crazy hair I have here. Uh, my kids' bums. <laughs> yeah, it's such a delicious, and it's seven natural Um And it comes, I see it behind you on the right, and it comes in the dispenser, so it's easy to roll on. It's not like a pipette. There's no, like, pot filling everywhere. It's designed in this... Um, very plastic travel with it um, and with the glass rollable roll it on wherever and I literally I use it on my face and that's actually how, um, uh, Sunshine Skin Tint was born because Diana, Georgie and myself were all wearing um, oils as moisturizers or mixing our foundation with oil before we put it on this is Sunshine Skin Tint um, I think it's such a must have particularly for spring and summer it's so easy to touch up on the go I mean, because because it has SPF in it, right? You want to reapply it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So tell that story of how sunshine oil became this. I love it. And you've got your sunshine behind you. So this was, um, we wanted to add a tint basically into that amazing packaging. We love the, um, the, the, the core of these amazing oils in um, a disposable, dispensable, easy to go packet. So we added a tint and an SPF 30, and then that became Sunshine Skin Tint. It's Coral Reef Safe SPF. Um, this new packaging, which we updated just recently, is actually refillable cartridges. So you finish one cartridge, just refill the cartridge, place all the plastic again, which is obviously great for our environment. Um, it comes in 14 shades. Which is great. great. I mean, 14 shades. Every year. And then you talked about combining shades, you know, having a couple and with this product, I feel like you can really do that because it's so light and so sure. there, oh, there you go. There you go. So you pump cool. and then you roll uh, and then uh, <laughs> I just go for it anywhere. Roll and then we say pump, roll, blend, go. I'm looking for my brush now. Maybe I don't have one. I might have to use my fingers. Cleanly washed. Do I have one in my makeup bag? This is what happens when I do makeup in a car, guys. <laughs> classic. It's classic Xana. You're doing such a great job. I'm so impressed. Every pr milk product that you throw on just works so per See, there you Perfect. That's there we go. 
and it just literally it's very sheer buildable dewy finish and um this they are because they are so sheer you can wear i can wear three different colors at any given moment um and then i love that and i think oftentimes people do do that they like to blend you know it's sometimes hard to find your exact color so but i think with this product you really can use two or three and you know yeah. No, easily. It's so good. It's so cool. I think it's such a must have, especially when we need more SPF when it's the sun shining bright. Uh, I also love this. We have to talk about this before we go. I mean, <gasps> <Holding water. laughs> it works so well. That is an OG you've got there tomorrow. That's it's an OG, but it works so well. And tell everyone about this before we go. I mean, if they don't know about it already, to be honest. What brush is that? This brush is Sephora, um, Sephora Pro. We did a Sephora collection. Last oh, week. I want a milk Sephora brush. It, this That's a great brush. It is a great brush. Mine's not the cleanest. Sorry, guys. Is it still available? Is it available? I think no? it is. I'm going to have to check for you guys, but maybe. Oh, let's find out. Let's put that on our website, too. I love that. Um, cooling water. That contains caffeine. So of a morning or in a hot day, you bake roll it under your eyes and it gives you this like immediate caffeine shot for your eyes is all i can say basically it's like a it does it deep puffs so well it deep puffs so well uh, patches um that come in cooling water patches so you can get on with your day's work and have your little patches underneath yes the cooling patches are are so cool too those are great for travel yeah. uh, episode 69 featuring xana is so great everybody be sure to listen we talk all about your background and your favorite things and more. And before we say goodbye, speaking of favorite things, I would like you to describe the perfect outfit for spring 2021 and the perfect outfit for summer 2021. So you can give us some fashion goals and something to look forward to. Oh my gosh. What a question. All right. So what are you, what are you feeling for spring and what will you be feeling for summer? Do you think? I'm going to feel, I'm just going to go straight in with the brights, oversized jumbo print florals, just throwing it out there. I'm going to wear like big moo, moo dresses covered in florals. Oh, I love it. And then summer? And summer, um, a small bikini. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Zana, thanks so much. It was so good to see you. Thanks, Tamari. You're the best.